Are you accidentally destroying your garden while trying to improve it? For six months, I put cardboard and biochar to the test, and, honestly, the results shocked me. One of these soil amendments promises long-term fertility, resilience, and thriving plants, while the other could be silently draining nutrients and even stunting growth. This experiment completely changed how I think about carbon in the garden. And, by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which one to trust. Every conversation about soil health eventually leads to carbon. Carbon isn't just another ingredient in the dirt under your feet. It's really the foundation of life in the soil. When gardeners talk about organic matter, decomposition, or microbial activity, they're actually talking about carbon cycling. Carbon is what fuels the microbial workforce underground, stabilizes nutrients, and creates the structure that plants rely on. But here's the catch. Not all carbon is created equal. Some forms, like cardboard, break down quickly and can disrupt soil balance in the process. Others, like biochar, can remain stable for centuries, acting as a reservoir for water, nutrients, and microbial life. My six-month trial comparing the two revealed the critical differences between short-term and long-term carbon strategies. Cardboard is everywhere, free, and often promoted as a clever way to recycle while improving your garden. Many gardeners use it for sheet mulching, laying down large pieces to suppress weeds, block sunlight, and create a foundation for new beds. At first glance, it looks like the perfect zero-cost solution. During the first weeks of my trial, cardboard did exactly what it promised. Weeds were smothered, the soil underneath stayed dark and moist, and layering compost on top created a neat, structured garden bed. But as the months went by, deeper issues started to show. Cardboard breaks down inconsistently. In warm, moist climates, it may decompose in under a year, but in cooler or drier conditions, thick cardboard can persist well beyond a season, creating these compact layers that suffocate soil. Instead of promoting microbial diversity, it sometimes did the opposite, creating anaerobic pockets beneath its surface. That lack of oxygen discouraged the beneficial organisms my plants depend on. Even more concerning was the nitrogen drawdown. As the cardboard broke down, soil microbes consumed nitrogen to process its carbon-rich fibers. That nitrogen didn't go to my plants. Instead, it was locked away temporarily, leaving crops yellowed, stunted, and underperforming at the very moment they needed nutrients most. To counter this, I had to apply extra nitrogen in the form of compost tea, one cup of compost steeped in one gallon of water, poured directly at the base of plants every two weeks, to keep the balance. Finally, not all cardboard is safe. Many boxes contain glues, coatings, or inks. While plain brown cardboard is usually fine, gardeners often use whatever's at hand, which risks introducing unwanted chemicals into otherwise healthy soil. By month six, I realized cardboard's real role. It's a short-term tool for suppressing weeds and establishing new beds, but not a long-term soil builder. The Biochar Experiment, Ancient Wisdom, Modern Science Biochar couldn't be more different. It looks like charcoal, but it's made through pyrolysis, the controlled burning of organic material in low oxygen conditions. What you get isn't ash, but a stable carbon skeleton full of microscopic pores. From the very first application, I noticed a change. Unlike cardboard, which depleted nitrogen at first, biochar held onto nutrients. That's because its porous structure acts like a magnet for minerals and fertilizers, preventing them from washing away during rain or irrigation. When I pre-charged it, mixing one pound of biochar with two gallons of water and one cup of compost, letting it sit for 48 hours, it became a nutrient-rich sponge ready to release goodness back into the soil. The benefits didn't stop at nutrients, though. Biochar transformed the physical structure of the soil itself. In sandy areas of my garden, it held moisture like a sponge, preventing dry spells from stressing the plants. In clay-heavy beds, it improved drainage, breaking up compaction and letting air reach plant roots. But, you know, the most impressive result was microbial activity. When I looked closely, I realized biochar wasn't just improving the soil. 
It was creating habitat. Those countless microscopic pores became homes for fungi, bacteria, and beneficial microbes that built thriving underground communities. By month six, the beds with biochar weren't just surviving, they were visibly outperforming the cardboard plots in growth, resilience, and yield. You know, at first glance, cardboard feels unbeatable. It's free and always available, right? But here's the hidden cost. It's temporary, and you have to keep reapplying it. Every new season means more boxes, more labor, and, honestly, more supplementation to fix its nitrogen imbalance. Over time, those hidden costs really add up. Now, biochar, on the other hand, does carry an upfront price, but it's a one-time investment. Properly inoculated, it stays in the soil for decades, even centuries. Each season builds on the last, with richer microbial activity, better nutrient retention, and improved soil structure. By the end of my six-month trial, it was clear cardboard saves money today, but biochar saves your soil tomorrow. So, the big lesson is this. Cardboard and biochar aren't interchangeable. Cardboard is a temporary solution for weed suppression or bed establishment. If you use it, shred it instead of laying large sheets. Remove all tape and labels and, yeah, always supplement with nitrogen-rich inputs like compost tea. Expect it to decompose unevenly and plan to replace it regularly. Biochar, in contrast, is a soil-building powerhouse. Before applying, always charge it with compost or liquid fertilizer to prevent initial nutrient lockup. A simple mix of one pound of biochar, one gallon of water, and one cup of compost works perfectly. Once in the soil, it continually improves fertility, moisture balance, and microbial life season after season. After six months, the truth became undeniable. Cardboard is a useful short-term tool, but it's not a soil builder. Biochar, on the other hand, is a permanent investment in soil health. It's the difference between patching up your garden for a season and building a self-sustaining system that thrives year after year. If your goal is quick weed suppression, cardboard has its place. But if you're committed to long-term fertility and resilience, biochar wins every time. Healthy soil is the foundation of every successful garden. And after this experiment, I can say with confidence that biochar is one of the most powerful tools we have for regenerative soil building. It doesn't just fix problems for a season, it creates the conditions for your garden to get better with time. If you found this video valuable, hit subscribe and share it with fellow growers who care about long-term soil health. Together, we can build gardens and a planet that thrive for generations.